I intentionally spiked my blood sugar every single day for 30 days straight while staying in a calorie deficit just to show that you can enjoy your favorite foods and still lose weight. There were some highs and there were definitely some lows. Watch to the end to find out how I lost all the weight, how the fluctuations in blood sugar affected me mentally, physically, and emotionally, and how you can eat your favorite foods and still lose weight and improve your health. All right, I just got my blood work done. We got a comprehensive blood panel taken. I am not wearing a continuous glucose monitor yet. Is As of right now, it is July 28th, 2023. Starting in August, I'm gonna be wearing the continuous glucose monitor every single day, monitoring my glucose spikes to show you that even if you spike your glucose, you can still lose weight as long as you're in a calorie deficit. Not only are we gonna track my weight throughout this month, but we're also gonna track blood markers and health markers as well because that is something I'm very interested in. Even though we might be able to lose weight, is it gonna have a negative effect effect on my health. Let's get into it. All right, day one this morning, I was 152.6 pounds and the first meal of the day, sour Skittles. There's 210 calories, 36 grams of sugar and 47 grams of total carbs. I'm going to have this entire bag. We're going to look at how much the blood sugar spikes. And then by the end of this month, if I, as long as I'm in a calorie deficit, we're going to see me lose weight. We'll be talking more about this later. It's become a huge trend and fad now for people who don't need them to be wearing them. We're gonna dive into that later because it's sort of ridiculous. And unless you have type one or type two diabetes or if your doctor tells you you need it, you don't. The, the whole purpose is to show that you can spike your blood sugar and still lose weight. Today was day one and the first meal I had was a bag of sour Skittles. My blood sugar didn't spike at all. I shouldn't say it all. It spiked, but like barely. My blood sugar went from 102 to 131, I think was the peak. Podcast done. I got a doctor's appointment with my wife. We're going to go do that. We're also going to get lunch as well. Should we talk about my hunger? Because I've literally the only thing I've had is the Skittles. Feel great. Hunger feels good. Jiu-Jitsu went really well. I did Jiu-Jitsu after I ate the Skittles. Um, actually, Jiu-Jitsu was really good. Energy was up. Maybe Skittles are just going to be like the power breakfast that we all need. Not obviously, but I feel really good for today. So let's go to the doctor's appointment and get some lunch. All right, so it is 3.22. I have not eaten all day since those Skittles and not deliberately not trying to do anything it's just been a crazy day so now we are at flower child and we are going to get some food flower child's the name of this place mitch is the one filming if you don't follow mitch follow him right here before we get into the food and what i'm going to eat i actually want to show you something very interesting i've been tracking my blood glucose right because i have the cgm on and after the skittles i'll put screenshots we'll put screenshots up so you can see it. i don't have to try and show you my phone we had a decent spike of blood sugar after i had the skittles it wasn't dramatic, it wasn't huge, but a decent spike. And I was speaking to the, the nutritionist here in the app, here on NutriSense, this is not sponsored, I'm paying full price for it. And she said that's a, probably a really decent sign of, of good insulin sensitivity, right? Where my insulin was able to come out and shuttle all that blood sugar out. What she did notice was that immediately after that spike, there was a big drop in blood sugar. And you can notice that the blood sugar actually dropped even lower than it was at baseline before the Skittles. And so I haven't really been tired. I think it could be a number of different things. Just like I'm in a really good mood today. Jiu-jitsu went really well. Work is going well. But my hunger is through the fucking roof. I'm unbelievably hungry, which also, to be fair, I haven't eaten since 930 and all I had was a 210 bag of Skittles. So a super, super, super low blood sugar could result in that as well. Irritability is fine. Mood is great. Energy is really good. I'm just, I'm really hungry at this point. And with this food staring at me and our food on the way, I'm about to lose it. I also did get uh, a beer as well. I don't know the calories in this, I'm gonna have to look it up online. Between you and me, I probably wouldn't have gotten the beer if it wasn't for this video. The main purpose of the video is to show you that as long as your calories are in check, you can lose weight and do it in a healthy, sustainable way. If it was just me normally, I probably would have just gotten the sparkling water, not the beer. I uh, actually don't know if I've mentioned it at this point in the video, but I got blood work done before. I'm gonna get blood work done once the whole challenge is over so we can see how all of this affects my blood work and health overall, not just my weight loss. L'chaim. Overall, I feel really good about today. 
I'm excited with how it's going. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the future. Uh, I've got a lot of questions from people on Instagram already. If you don't follow me, you can follow me on Instagram. I've got a lot of questions about things people would like me to try and experiment. So throughout the rest of this 30-day challenge, I'm very excited to try different foods, different combinations, just to see what happens to my blood sugar over time. So make sure you watch the whole video because I'm excited to find out just like you are. Now, before we get further into the video, I wanna clarify why am I making this video. For all the haters, for all the people who are like, this is stupid, that's not healthy, blah, blah, blah. I wanna clarify exactly why I'm doing this. It's for three important reasons. Number one, the main reason is because I can tell people all day that in order to lose fat, you have to be in a calorie deficit. But oftentimes, they just don't fucking believe me. And now with ChatGPT, anyone can pull studies from the internet like that. So everyone, even uneducated people, can have a study. And rather than me just pulling out more studies and showing you, I just want to do it. I want you to watch me. I'm going to lose fat while I spike my blood sugar every day. And specifically, why am I choosing blood sugar? It's because stupid things have come to the limelight, like don't eat fruit because fruit's gonna make you fat because it spikes your blood sugar. It's fucking stupid. And even though it sounds stupid, people still believe it. And I always say, how many fat people do you know who got fat from eating fruit? Which, nobody. No one ever got fat from blueberries or strawberries or watermelon. No one. But people still think that the sugar in these fruits are bad for them. So I'm gonna show you that you can spike your blood sugar and still lose fat. The second reason I wanted to bring this up though is because there are things about blood sugar that are very important to know. And I wanna clarify, if you are a diabetic, type one or type two, or if you have an issue with your blood sugar or hormonally, don't pay attention to this video. Don't take my advice. I'm not speaking to you. Talk to your doctor. I'm speaking to otherwise healthy individuals who do not have issues with their blood sugar, who do not have issues with their insulin. If you do have those issues, please, please, please speak with your doctor. Don't take my advice. This is for otherwise healthy people who are struggling to lose weight, struggling to develop a healthy relationship with food, and I just want to show them the truth about energy balance. Now with that in mind, there are important things to know about blood sugar in terms of your overall health, in terms of your energy, in terms of your performance, in terms of your mood, in terms of overall well-being. It is important to be aware of your blood sugar and how that's impacting you. So even though I'm going to be able to lose weight while spiking my blood sugar, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good idea to be chronically elevating your blood sugar and having super high highs and very low lows. It is generally a better strategy to have a more leveled out blood glucose over the long term. So I wanna make that really clear. Even though I'm gonna be able to lose weight doing this, it doesn't mean that it's a strategy you should follow. I'm just doing something extreme to make a simple point because sometimes you have to do extreme things for people to really understand what you're trying to get across. The last reason I'm making this video, and, and I really wanna drive this home here, I'm wearing the CGM right here, the Continuous Glucose Monitor. This has become a huge trend in recent years, probably in the last like one to two years for regular healthy people to be wearing the CGMs to monitor their blood sugar because they've been told blood sugar spikes are bad and you need to monitor them and if you're not monitoring them you're not going to be able to lose weight. That is horseshit. You don't need to monitor it unless you have a health issue that dictates and requires you to. Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or other issues. Interestingly and unfortunately because so many people have been buying them, the demand for blood sugar monitors, for these uh, continuous glucose monitors, has gone way up, and as demand goes up, price goes up. And what that's done is it's created a huge back order, so a lot of people who really need the CGMs aren't getting them, and a lot of people who need them and aren't able to afford them also aren't able to get them. And I know this is, is almost I'm being a hypocrite because I have one on my arm, but I figured because of my reach, if I can show you that blood sugar spikes are normal, and I can show you through wearing one that you actually don't need it unless your doctor tells you you do, then hopefully more people will not buy them. And I promise you, once this 30 days is over, I will not be using them. And if I can, I will donate them to someone who needs them. So another reason I'm doing this is just to show you blood sugar spikes are normal. Worrying about your blood sugar spikes, assuming again you're not type one or type two diabetic or have another issue, worrying about your blood sugar spikes is almost like worrying about blood pressure when you're working out. When you exercise and lift weights, your blood pressure goes up and that's normal. Now, chronically high blood pressure is really bad. You don't want chronically high blood pressure, just like you don't want chronically high blood sugar. But when you lift weights, your blood pressure will go up because it's a natural human bodily response to lifting weights. So you don't worry about that because that's what happens when you lift weights. Same things when you eat certain foods. Your blood sugar goes up. That's what happens when you eat them. And I want to make it clear that it's not something to worry about or something that you should be fearful of or something that's going to prevent you from making your progress. It's normal. So by the end of this video, I will not be using it anymore. And I really want to make sure that no one else is buying these because it's actually preventing people who really need them from getting what they need. Day one is over. 
See you tomorrow. Are you ready? Yes, please. Let me ask you this. If you had to choose between a strawberry ice glaze with sprinkles or a chocolate ice glaze with sprinkles, what would you prefer? The hot ones coming off the line right now. Which ones are the hot ones? The glazed. Just like the regular original glazed? Yeah. I'll get, all right, I'll just get. I don't eat the donuts. I'm sorry. You don't eat the donuts? I have my own donut. What do you mean? I'm fat. So I don't <laughs> eat the donuts. Are you laughing at me? <laughs> no, no. No, don't. No donuts for you, dude. <laughs> wow. That's so good. It's very light and airy. It's not that many calories, but also doesn't... <laughs> that part. <laughs> yeah, I could have 12 of these in like 10 minutes without it an issue whatsoever. <laughs> Dumb. What's going on? It's day four, already 3.8 pounds down, which is wildly fast. Anyway, gonna go to CVS, pick up something to spike my blood sugar for breakfast. So I'm trying to decide what I want. I actually prefer more like Skittles, uh, gummy worms, stuff like that, which are more just pure sugar, which realistically is, that's what people say is bad. No sugar, no sugar. So I think I'm gonna go with something very, very sugary. Got it, sour gummy worms. All right, we're gonna spike the blood sugar. So I'm gonna have two servings, 200 calories, 46 grams of carbs, and 28 grams of sugar. I'm going to portion out my 14 gummy worms. And while I do this, just uh, so we're clear, I know some people are gonna be like, well, this is, this is wrong because uh, most people wouldn't be doing that and that's why you're still able to lose weight because you're only eating an appropriate portion. Yeah, that's exactly fucking right. It's not an issue of these being bad, it's that people might be eating too much of these. And rather than saying you can't eat them ever, we're just saying, you know what, you can eat them, let's just make sure you eat them in moderation. Bon appetit. They're delicious. Last one. Now, I will say, I'm losing weight very quickly, right? It's it's only been four days, I'm already 3.8 pounds down. Yes, the uh, certain amount of that is water, it's glycogen, uh, stomach content, not all of that, not even close to all of that is fat, but I'm still losing at a very rapid rate, and I wanna be very clear, I don't think this is normal, and I don't want you to lose weight at this rapid of a weight, right? It's only 30 days, and so if I only lost like two or three pounds in these 30 days, many people would be like, well, that could have been fluctuations, it wasn't real fat. I have to lose a significant amount of weight during these 30 days to really convince people like, oh shit, this actually works, this is actually true. Keep that in mind as I lose a lot of weight, this is not what I consider a sustainable rate of weight loss, this is just to make a point. Now this question is the big question, the big kahuna, the one everyone wants to know, how do you figure out how many calories you need to eat in order to lose fat? Well, the good answer is I have a very simple equation that you can use to figure it out, and I'm gonna give it to you 100% for free. Go to the link in my description. You can get on my email list. You'll see it says free calorie calculator. As soon as you sign up, you're gonna get a confirmation email, confirm the email, and I will send you an email with my very basic, very simple calculation to tell you exactly how many calories you need to eat in order to lose fat sustainably. How do you feel after eating gummy bears for breakfast? Or Honestly, I don't feel bad. And I don't think it's because the gummy bears are a good pre-workout. I think it's just because uh, it's still really early on in this 30 day challenge. I don't feel bad. Alex is just a fucking beast. And he's been training for like 20 plus years. I've been training for four. Today I'm the nail. Some days I'm the hammer, but not against Alex.
Do you wanna say hi? Are you saying hi to YouTube? All right, so had the gummy worms for breakfast, had a big spike as you can see on the screen. Um, now I'm gonna have, I got some oatmeal, I've got some bran buds, I've got some fruit, I've got some protein powder. Uh, very high carb, moderate protein, low fat meal right now. And I feel pretty good. Jiu Jitsu went well. I think at the end of it, I was starting to feel pretty tired and fatigued, but overall, on day four, I'm feeling very good, and I'm excited to see what happens as time goes on in this deficit. I have a feeling I'll be getting tired, and uh, I'll feel my strength going down a little bit, but as of right now, I feel good. Now, one thing that's interesting, and we'll be able to put these screenshots up on the screen, but I had the gummy worms, as you saw, I had those completely fasted, so nothing beforehand, and then later, I actually had the meal that you saw, which was, it was oatmeal, and it was some bran buds, and it had some fruit in it, and uh, they're overall like what people would call healthy carbs, right? There's nothing unhealthy about any of those, and they're, they're amazing, they're very very good for you, very nutritious. Ironically, my blood glucose spike was higher from the oatmeal and bran buds and fruit than it was from the gummy worms. And under the logic of what many people on the internet say, that would mean that the gummy worms are a healthier option than the oatmeal and bran buds and fruit and protein powder, which is just outrageous. And this is a very basic example of why you can't go by one metric at any point in time. When you get your glucose, you're getting one snapshot in time. And so for people just to, to say like, anything that spikes your blood sugar is bad, well, realistically, every time I've eaten, I've spiked my blood sugar. Every time I've exercised at a higher intensity, I've spiked my blood sugar. At a lower intensity, it drops. But either way, there are many things that cause a spike in blood sugar outside of simply what food you're eating. So that's important to keep in mind. The other thing I really wanna hit on here before we end today, I just need to give a shout out to all of the people who actually really need these things because it is incredibly, incredibly time consuming and draining. And I know I've only been doing it for about a week now. I started a few days before the challenge began. So I know it, it can get easier. Some people have messaged me, some diabetics been like, listen, it gets easier over time. It's not a huge deal. But then other people have told me like it takes up a huge portion of their daily thoughts. This has been unbelievably eye opening for me. And actually living it, and I'm not saying I'm living with diabetes, I'm saying I'm living with tracking my blood sugar, just simply that aspect of it, I can't even begin to imagine. That's it for day four. Mitch, is there anything else you want me to discuss? That's it. All right, that's it. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you don't already. I'll see you over the next couple of days. It's day eight. We're gonna go get some white bread to spike that blood sugar. Let's go. Baked in Texas. We're getting some white bread. We're gonna take four slices. Each slice, I actually really like the top one, but I know it's a controversial piece, so I'm just gonna take the middle ones and save this one for later. Each slice is 70 calories and each slice has 13 grams of carbohydrates. For four of these, that is, I believe, 280 calories and 52 grams of carbs on an empty stomach. Oh, and as a quick update on my weight, I'm down, I don't know the exact number, but I'm down about like three and a half pounds already. So for all the people who say you can't lose weight while spiking your blood sugar, you're fucking wrong. I feel slightly more full than I did before. I feel fine. I haven't noticed that the blood sugar spikes and drops have actually affected me very much. It's been more about the size of the meals and how filling they've been, which is directly related to the, the caloric quantity of those meals. So, all right, let's wait and see what happens. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably wondering how many calories was I eating every day in order to lose weight so quickly? Well, obviously I had to take a little bit more of an aggressive approach to this because I knew if I only lost two, three, or four pounds during this experiment, then the anti-sugar task force people would be like, well, it was only two or three pounds. It could have been water fluctuations. I knew I wanted to lose a lot of weight. So I took an aggressive caloric deficit, which meant I took my goal weight, which was originally 140 
38 pounds, multiplied it by 10, and that was about 1480, so 1480 calories. Generally, my calories were between 1400 to 1500 calories every day. Some days was a little bit lower, other days it was significantly higher, but generally between 1400 to 1500 calories, which is about a five to 600 calorie deficit for me every single day. All right, it's been about four hours. What we're gonna put up on the screen now is my chart of my blood sugar spikes from today. And you'll see that after the white bread, my blood sugar spiked considerably, but not like outrageously high. It got up to a peak of about 133. The interesting thing for me was the immediate drop, right? So a lot of people talk about the, the dangers and the fears and the, the issues with huge blood sugar spikes. And as of now, at this point in the video, you should know that like it's not that big of a deal, especially if you're not diabetic, if you don't have type one or type two diabetes, like it's normal. That's what happens when you eat and you can still lose weight and you can still be healthy while doing this. To me, what's interesting is the immediate immediate drop off. It went from like in the 130s all the way down to 106 very, very quickly. And again, this is normal. It's normal to have the fluctuations of blood sugar, but that's often where people will get a little bit tired, maybe a little bit of brain fog, maybe a little bit more hungry. And that's something to pay attention to. Now, personally, I didn't feel bad. I didn't lose any, I didn't uh, get hungrier, I didn't lose any mental focus, I haven't felt bad at all, I've actually felt great so far today, despite starting my day with four, four slices of white bread, but it didn't go as high as I thought, but I did think it was worth noting the huge drop off, which over time might be causing you to be a little bit more hungry, a little bit more lethargic, and it's important to be aware of how it's making you feel so you can make those decisions for yourself. Diet soda has become a villain on social media. Some people say diet soda spikes your blood sugar. Other people say diet soda spikes your insulin. I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor so we can test it. If this diet soda spikes my blood sugar, we're gonna see my blood sugar go up. If it doesn't spike my blood sugar, but it does spike my insulin, we're gonna see my blood sugar go down. If it doesn't do either of those, it's gonna stay right around the same range. As of right now, it's 309 and my blood sugar is 93 milligrams per deciliter. Now, keep in mind, it's normal for blood sugar to go up and down, so it's not gonna be a completely straight line, but if it does spike my blood sugar, it's gonna be straight up. If it doesn't spike my blood sugar, but it does spike my insulin, we're gonna see a sharp decline because all that insulin will be pulling other blood sugar out of my bloodstream. In an hour, we're gonna check again, and if it's relatively consistent, we're gonna know it didn't spike my blood sugar and it didn't spike my insulin. It is now two hours after I drank the dreaded Diet Coke. Let's take a look at my numbers. If you'll remember, it was at 93 milligrams per deciliter when I first started. One hour after it, it was at 96 milligrams per deciliter. Two hours after, it is 86 milligrams per deciliter. All of these are very normal fluctuations in blood sugar. In a normal full meal, my blood sugar would often go up to 140 milligrams per deciliter. And if I hadn't had a blood sugar spike, but my insulin did spike, we would have seen a big, big drop in my blood sugar. So to keep it within this 10 milligram per deciliter range, ranging from 86 to 96 milligrams per deciliter, is very clear data showing us that diet soda does not spike blood sugar, nor does it spike insulin. Quick aside, if you are struggling with your own weight loss, with your own workouts, with your own motivation, sign up for my email list. The link is in the description. Every single time I publish a YouTube video, I pick 10 people to win a free month in my inner circle. It's where I give workouts every month, nutrition guidelines, everything you need to improve your health, fitness, lose weight, and get stronger. So if you want help with that, sign up for my email list. The link is in the description of this video. Let's get back to the rest of the video. All right, it is day 11. I'm a little over five pounds down already. And we've already shown that regardless of your blood sugar spikes, you can lose weight. We're gonna keep going for 30 days. But now I wanna do something different than what we've done thus far. I want to start looking at other foods that are maybe typically considered health foods. So for example, one of the things that has spiked my blood sugar a lot more than anything else is oatmeal. And I've seen people use this as a justification to say oatmeal isn't healthy, which is Horse shit. Oatmeal is one of the best things that you can have in your diet. I have a registered dietitian on this app that I've been using for my uh, continuous glucose monitor. Her name is Catherine. She's been wonderful. And she recommended I try pho, P-H-O, that we're going to try that today and see how my blood sugar spikes. Are you going to eat it all? I'm going to eat it all. Okay. 
done. All right, it is two hours since I had the delicious pho soup. Right after, about 30 minutes after I ate it, I checked my blood sugar and it was skyrocketing. It was on the way up and I was like, oh my goodness, this is about to be a fucking explosion of blood sugar. Then we just checked it now and we realized that it peaked at 139 milligrams per deciliter and then it started to come right back down. And generally speaking, the, the rule of thumb is below 140, is that healthy range. If it goes above 140, that's when you've, you've uh, spiked your blood sugar a little bit too much. And we can go into detail on that later, but basically it did not go nearly as high as many people thought it would. I would imagine that I have very good insulin sensitivity. I would imagine that the workouts I did earlier in the day probably helped prevent that as well. So I feel great, I'm full, I had a wonderful meal, and that's what we're doing two hours after that fuss soup. One of the most important questions someone can have, especially after watching this video is, should you worry about blood sugar spikes? And the answer, if you are a healthy individual, not a diabetic, not pre-diabetic, if you're healthy, you don't have to worry about blood sugar spikes. They're normal. It is normal for your blood sugar to increase after you eat. It's not something to cause you concern. It's not something to fear. It's not something to even mitigate. It is normal. What's important to be aware of is how high your blood sugar goes and how long it stays elevated. There is a big difference between an acute short-term blood sugar spike from a meal versus staying elevated chronically high blood sugar for long periods of time. And many influencers on social media are having a slice of white bread or having a piece of fruit or having Skittles, whatever it is, and are saying, look, it spiked my blood sugar. No fucking shit, it spiked your blood sugar. That is a normal response from your body after having that food. It's not something to fear, it's not something to worry about. What's important to be aware of is how long it stays elevated and how high it goes over a long period of time. And who's really affected by this are diabetics, both type one and type two, and also those with prediabetes. And if that's something you're struggling with, speak with your doctor. But if you are otherwise healthy and you don't have these issues, you do not need to worry about blood sugar spikes. All right, it's day 15, down well over five and a half pounds now, and we're gonna do an experiment today. We're gonna experiment with oatmeal in the morning and then oatmeal and a protein source in the afternoon just because we wanna see if there's a difference in glucose response. So I'm gonna do one cup of Quaker one minute oats. You can hear my daughter in the background, she's getting fed. This is 300 calories and 54 grams of carbs. Let's see what happens. Filling. This is like one of the best things you can have when you're trying to lose weight. 300 calories just sits in your stomach like a fucking rock. Done. All right, it is three and a half hours after I had that huge bowl of oatmeal. I'm not hungry at all, so I'm gonna wait a little bit to retest the oatmeal with the protein source to gauge the difference in my blood sugar response. But I do wanna show you how the blood sugar has responded thus far. It's been very interesting. I've had oatmeal many of the days of this experiment, and every single day it spiked dramatically, well above 150 milligrams per deciliter, and almost immediately. Today, it was a little bit different. And there's so many different things that could affect your blood sugar response to different meals. So it goes to show you that it's not that it's just that one food is good or bad, that one blood sugar response is good or bad. There could be a number of different factors that affect it. But what's very interesting to me is that this blood sugar resp response was very delayed. So you'll be able to see that when I first ate it, there was uh, right around 9.30 or 10 a.m., there's an initial spike up. I thought it was gonna go up very, very high, but then there was a very sharp downturn. After that sharp downturn, then it started to slow slowly go up again with a couple of dips along the way, and that's when it finally broke, broke that 140 milligrams per deciliter, and now it's currently on its way back down again. So what we're seeing here is a slight delay in blood sugar spike, which is very interesting because this is the first time in the entire experiment this has happened. I will be very interested to see what happens when we add a protein source to the equation. All right, it has been six hours since I last ate and I deliberately waited as long as I could because I wanted to make this as accurate as possible. So I had the oatmeal, just the oatmeal, no protein with it six hours ago. Now I'm gonna have oatmeal, the same amount of oatmeal, just to add a protein source, see the difference in blood sugar response. Oops. <laughs> 
We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen. Don't tell Nini. Yeah, don't tell Nini. Right. What kind of protein are you gonna use? I am going to use protein powder. I was thinking about using like a chicken breast or salmon or something, but honestly, oatmeal and chicken and oatmeal and salmon don't really fucking go together. So we're gonna have a scoop of this, and we're gonna see how it goes. Yeah. Now, if I had to guess, it's so fun to play this little guessing game. I don't think this is gonna make much of a difference, if any, in terms of glucose spike. If I were to have something like chicken or salmon or, or more of a whole food, I feel like that would slow the digestion down, which would lead to a, a lower blood sugar spike. But something like whey protein, I, I don't think this is gonna have much of an effect at all, but we'll see. Oatmeal. The first half feels like it's not gonna be that big of a deal. The second half, it starts to feel like cement sitting in your stomach, so. It's crazy, I was, I was getting really hungry and now I'm already stuffed. Last bite, all done. All right, let's analyze the difference in my blood sugar response from a bowl of oatmeal to a bowl of oatmeal with protein. I'm thinking it's gonna be very interesting for you to listen the whole way through. The first blood sugar spike, I had a pretty sharp spike up, but it wasn't dramatic, then a sharp spike down, the interesting part for me was a couple hours later, I had a very sharp spike up that went over 145 milligrams per deciliter. So it was the couple hours later that took me by surprise, and it makes sense when we think about it was probably delayed as a result of it just being an only carb source, but there is fiber in oatmeal, so it might have just taken a little bit longer for that to happen. Now. If we go to the second spike of the day, to the second bowl of oatmeal with protein, you're gonna notice that the initial spikes look almost exactly the same. The initial spikes were almost exactly 129 milligrams per deciliter. And it followed almost the exact same subsequent drop in blood sugar. The main difference is instead of having this, the next big peak, it didn't, it didn't have as big of a spike. It did spike up a little bit, but it wasn't as high. And the reason for that, I would imagine, is not just the fiber from the oatmeal, but also the addition of protein to this meal. Overall, I think it's very cool to see how they're actually far more similar than they are different. Now, another one of the most common questions I got during this experiment was, does eating protein with your meal reduce the blood sugar spike? And the short answer is yes, it absolutely does. But it's not just protein, right? If you have protein with the meal, or if you have fruits with the meal, or vegetables with the meal, or high quality fats with the meal, or even if you have a little bit of apple cider vinegar with the meal, you will reduce this blood sugar spike. The bigger question here is though, does it really matter? If you aren't diabetic, if you don't have pre-diabetes, does it really matter from a health perspective, from a weight loss perspective? Is it having that big of an impact by reducing it slightly? Not really, but I will also say this, Generally speaking, when people say they get really hungry from having a high blood sugar spike and then a drop, well, of course, they're gonna get hungrier from having a meal of just carbs than if they had a meal of carbs and protein and vegetables and some fats because it's a more complete meal. Not only more complete, there's more calories, it's more filling, there's more volume. So it's very short-sighted to reduce your health and your hunger down to a simple blood sugar spike you should look at it from a more holistic, complete perspective. And if you have a more holistic, complete meal, fruits, vegetables, proteins, carbs, fiber, high quality fats, that's overall gonna be better for you, which realistically shouldn't be that shocking. It's day 18 and today we're gonna eat sugar. Literally, sugar. I'm gonna pour myself a quarter cup of the good stuff, which by the way, a quarter cup of sugar is more than you would get in a 12 ounce can of Coke. And then I'm gonna eat it like a fucking asshole. I'm gonna eat this and see what happens to my blood sugar. This is gonna be very, oh my God, this is gonna be very uncomfortable. Bon appetit. I mean, it tastes great. 
We're gonna see what happens to my blood sugar. There is a training method called grease the groove that it, <laughs> there is a training, <clears throat> okay. I think this is the sugar. <laughs> I'm crashed. Ah, here we go. Ever, oh God, I feel it. <laughs> What's going on? I'm exhausted. We did the sugar, we did the sugar spike like two hours ago and I was hyped. I was like, I'm gonna do this every day. I haven't checked my blood sugar yet, but I am exhausted now. We're trying to film other content and um, I can't even think straight. Yeah, uh, check. I feel like I'm slurring. I'm so tired. Yeah, check, check right. it. Let's see where we're at two hours later. Oh yeah, it's on the way down. All right, so it initially spiked up. The crazy thing is we'll put it on the screen. It wasn't that big of a spike for more sugar than you would get in a 12 ounce can of soda, of Coke specifically. It only went up to like 140 milligrams per deciliter, which is not that big of a spike. Right now though, it is shooting down and I feel it. So we'll see what happens. I might end up being very hypoglycemic, but I'm fucking exhausted. This sucks. Let's go get some coffee. Ah. Let's talk about what happened because the last clip you saw was now four days ago after I had a terrible crash from eating a quarter of a cup of straight fucking sugar. After I did that, my blood sugar spiked up. It didn't go crazy actually, which is nuts. It went up to about 144 milligrams per deciliter, which is slightly high, but considering it's more than a can of Coke, I thought it would go, I thought it would go much higher. After that, there was a sharp drop and it went down to about 67 milligrams per deciliter. This is considered hypoglycemic. It's uh, it's not dramatically low, but it is a little bit low. I actually, again, expected it to be much lower than that. During the spike, I was feeling good. I was telling Mitch, I feel great. I should do this every day. I am I felt like a kid. I was like, da, 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 da. Like, it felt incredible. Then I had the single worst drop I've had throughout this entire challenge. And realistically, it's the worst I've felt in as long as I can remember, especially just from a food-induced feeling. We were filming and we were trying to do other clips. We were trying to film like batch film for other social media content. I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I felt like shit for probably about three to four hours where I had some coffee, I had a little bit of food, and I just laid down and I just hung out with my wife and daughter. I tried to play like a little bit of video games, answered some questions on Instagram, but that was pretty much it. I laid down, I, I felt exhausted. It was terrible. It was great while it was good, and it was terrible when it was bad. All right, it is day 22, I'm over eight pounds down. So I think I made my fucking point, which means I'm gonna go get the most manly, the most savage thing I could possibly get to spike my blood sugar. Hi, welcome to Starbucks, how may we help you today? Hey, could I get a uh, pumpkin spice frappuccino medium, please? Yeah, sure thing. I know it doesn't sound savage, but this thing's got 420 calories, 65 grams of sugars, 15 fat, six protein, 65 grams of sugar. This is more sugar than when I ate just a quarter cup of straight fucking sugar. So this could fuck up my whole day. It's good. It's. It feels like I'm eating like um, like a cheesecake in a drink form. It feels like cheesecake that they just shoved in this cup. I can't even enjoy it. It's too sweet. It's too sweet. It, this is like, you know on Thanksgiving or on really any special holiday when like you have a dessert and it's like, oh, this is great, but like, I don't wanna have this every day. Like this is a great dessert once a year. One, two, one or two pieces is fine. I cannot believe people have this every fucking day. This is fucking wild. This is too much. No wonder like 
a piece of fruit wouldn't be enough for them after they have this every fucking day. Holy shit. Almost done. You have to drink it. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. You have to. <laughs> All done. Now we wait. Remember that time when I said I think this might fuck my day up? This is definitely gonna fuck my day up. I, so I'm lactose intolerant, and not just lactose intolerant. I am what some might call explosively lactose intolerant, and I can feel my insides like gurgling and slowly expand. Like I'm getting very bloated right now, which can only mean that within the next 15 to 60 minutes, I'm going to destroy the bathroom. And I can, I can feel it already. I'm not like sugar crashing, but the, my insides are, are bubbling up. So this is making for great television. All right, it is now 2.15. And it's been a few hours since I had the pumpkin spice frappuccino. I'm gonna show you what my blood sugar looks like. And you'll notice, we'll put it up on the screen so you can see as well. We had that initial spike that I had while I was in the car and that was probably residual from jujitsu. Then it starts to go down as it normally would because I wasn't exercising anymore. Then you see it start to go back up again. Now it went all the way up to 136 milligrams per deciliter, which quite frankly, is not that high. That is very much in what's considered the healthy range. And then it shot right down. And right now I'm in that stage where it's going into hypoglycemia. It's going to, to very, very low levels. I feel fine. I don't feel hungry. I don't feel tired. I felt way worse from the quarter cup of sugar than I do from this drink. And I think there are many reasons why this could be, but if I had to guess, it's likely because this sugar bomb that I just had with the, the pumpkin spice frappuccino also had 15 grams of fat. And with that 15 grams of fat, it slowed it down and it's probably helping me deal with it a little bit better. Mentally and emotionally and energy wise and hunger wise, I feel totally fine. I think what's important to be aware of is how different foods affect you not how someone tells you a food is supposed to affect you. So for example, every single time I've spiked my blood sugar with watermelon, my blood sugar goes through the fucking roof. Like high, high, like super high, well like 150, 160 plus range. Whereas with this pumpkin spice frappuccino, it didn't even get to 140. And so I feel way better having watermelon than I do having the pumpkin spice frappuccino. Look at how the food affects you, not how some schmuck on Instagram tells you you're supposed to feel. Listen to how it affects you and what your body is telling you. Then you can start to develop a better relationship with food and find which foods are gonna help fuel you for your own life. All right, it is day 25 of spiking my blood sugar every day, and today I'm going to be getting in a cold bath. I want to see if the cold bath affects my blood sugar because at this point in the video, as you know, it's not just what you eat that impacts your blood sugar, also hormonal response can impact your blood sugar. Doing high intensity interval training can increase your blood sugar because your body needs energy while you're doing that. Cortisol and adrenaline can impact your blood sugar and elevate it. So because I'm so nervous and I do not want to do this, I'm actually very interested to see if this is going to spike my blood sugar. So we're going to get a baseline blood sugar right now. Let's see what it is. All right, right now my blood sugar is at 99 milligrams per deciliter. You can actually already see it's on a straight spike up right now, which might be because I'm nervous and anxious going into this. We'll see what happens once I get in the cold bath. Trying to calm yourself down? Dude, I'm like already... I, heat, fine, put me in a sauna, I'm good. Get me in the cold, oof, fuck that shit. Oh. Come on, you got it. God damn. Try to get to your neck, there you go. Relax, there you go, breathe. There we go, breathe, deep breath in. What do you think so far? I think I hate this with every ounce of my being. David, what's the temperature? 
Temperature is 55 degrees, I think. It's maybe 50, yep, 55. Halfway there, we got this. It's only halfway? Come on. Exactly. <laughs> Let's get that full submerge. In my head? Yep, come on. All the way in there. Is that it? Three minutes. Woo! Oh, oh God. Damn. Was it as fun as you thought it would be? It was not more not fun, but not less not fun. <laughs> All right, so the cold bath sucked, but it did not spike my blood sugar. We'll put up the uh, the effect it had right here so you can see the graph. It didn't spike my blood sugar at all, which is very interesting, but because I still need to spike my blood sugar today, we're getting, we're getting some potatoes because I have a feeling these are gonna spike my blood sugar a lot. One package of this is 440 calories and it's about 60 grams of carbs. So we're gonna have this for dinner tonight and see how it goes. All right, we're gonna make some potatoes. Again, this has this whole package, we're gonna eat the whole thing. It's 440 calories, 80 grams of carbs. That's the boiling water. Let's go make them. Oh. Dude, these are better than real potatoes. This is amazing. I can't believe this entire thing is only 440 calories. Could you talk more about how happy this makes you? You've been filming me for over a year now. Has there ever been a time when you've seen me enjoy eating something as much as I've enjoyed eating this? No. I don't do sponsored posts. This is not sponsored. And these potatoes are just, they're consistently fucking delicious. So, I love it. All right, well the potatoes did the trick. Aside from being absolutely amazing, they spiked my blood sugar a lot. You can see big spike. It actually went from, this is pretty nuts, my blood sugar went from 79 milligrams per deciliter before I ate the potatoes to 143 milligrams per deciliter. What we wanna look for is about a 30 point jump maximum uh, from, uh, from any individual blood sugar spike. This was a 64 point jump. This was just dramatic and I feel amazing. Could you talk about maybe some of the comments or messages you've been getting from people about their experiences with losing weight or their relationships with food since you've been posting about this cut? Yeah, I mean, some of them just from today, and we'll put up some screenshots, I'll send them to you so you can put them up there. And I asked, I said, be honest with me and more importantly yourself, if your weight stayed the same for eight days in a row, would you quit? And I got a lot of people saying, before you, I would have quit. This something like this would have caused me to quit. This is where I would end up binge eating. And that's the reason why people fail with their diets. It's not because diets don't work. It's because when you don't make progress in a day or two days or three days, you think it's not working, so you quit. That is horseshit. I, I've seen plateaus last for three to four weeks. You don't change anything. You don't increase your, your exercise. You don't decrease your calories. You definitely don't quit and, and start binge eating. You just keep going. Stay the same and eventually it will drop. And you'll see by the end of this cut, I'm not gonna change anything. My weight will drop again. It is day 28, I am down 9.8 pounds. The anti-sugar task force on social media is fucking livid. I'm actually feeling pretty good. Let's get to the rest of the workout. Now, with me losing weight so quickly, one of the most common questions I got was, how am I handling the hunger or how am I staying full during this calorie deficit? And this doesn't apply just to this caloric deficit, this applies to any time me or you or anyone is losing weight. And the reality is, unfortunately, if you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna be hungry, it's normal. In fact, if you told me you were never hungry in a calorie deficit, I would tell you you're not actually in a calorie deficit. Hunger is a normal part of losing weight. It is important, however, to have strategies to help you stay in a calorie deficit. So, for example, what's important to remember here is the majority of what I ate during this experiment, even though I did spike my blood sugar every day, the majority was a very healthy, nutrient-dense diet. So a lot of fiber, a lot of protein, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables. The majority of my diet 
was very healthy and very nutrient dense, which helps me stay more full. Emphasizing fiber and emphasizing protein were incredibly helpful. Staying hydrated, getting high quality sleep. I know these things are boring, but that's what works. This is what helps you the most. Most important of all is understanding hunger a little bit is not an emergency. It's okay to be a little bit hungry. It's okay to go to bed with a little bit of hunger. It's not something to freak out about. It's not something to worry about. If that's something you struggle with, if it's something that gives you anxiety, I would encourage you to speak with a therapist because that might be a sign of disordered eating and having some food anxieties where you're like, oh my God, the slightest bit of hunger will lead you to binge. For a calorie deficit, it's okay to be a little bit hungry. It's not a forever thing. It's just a brief period of time. And the sooner you can know this, the sooner you can stop worrying about it and understand it's just part of the process. I also have an entire video about how to develop a healthier relationship with food. So if you struggle with your relationship with food, click the link in my description. I have an entire video geared towards exactly that. Day 28, I'm at the airport, flying to San Jose to go on a podcast. Spike in the blood sugar, we got some pink berry with raspberries and of course, gummy bears. All right, it is day 29. I am officially 10.4 pounds down, and I figured tonight I would go for a fucking bomb of sugar. Number one, we've got these naked smoothies that everybody loves. This one has 52 grams of sugar in it, and not only did I get that, but I also got this Tropicana orange juice, and this has 34 grams of sugar. So if my math is correct, I believe it's 86 grams of sugar. It is also 8.16 p.m. So not only am I having a lot of sugar, almost 100 grams, but it's also <gasps> at night. I'm gonna start off with the orange juice just because my favorite is the smoothie. I think the smoothie tastes better. So we're gonna save the best for last. L'chaim. They really try and get you, they say the, the no sugar added. Okay, yeah. But there's 52 grams of fucking sugar. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. 52 grams of sugar, and listen, it's fine. That I, The whole purpose of this experiment is to show that you can have sugar and still lose fat and have it not be an issue. But uh, it's important to be aware of the, the health. The health halo is what they call it. It's, it's this idea that, you know, it puts like the leaves on it and it's naked and there's fruits and oh my God, it must be healthy. Done with the smoothie. Getting the final blood work done. Just finished the 30 day challenge and uh, got it. This is a comprehensive blood panel, huh? Yes. Very comprehensive. We're gonna get it all taken care of and see how the 30 days of spike my blood sugar affected my blood work. Now, one of the most common questions I got throughout this experiment was could someone who has insulin resistance use a caloric deficit to lose weight? And the answer is unequivocally yes. If you have insulin resistance, you can still lose weight as long as you're in a caloric deficit. I'm actually bringing on a doctor. He's an obesity medicine specialist. His name is Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, and we'll be talking later in this video. But what I wanna make very clear is this. Right now, there's a lot of social media content geared towards scaring people who have insulin resistance, saying if you have insulin resistance, you can't lose weight. Basically saying you're broken, it's not gonna work, you can't lose weight unless you have their specific bio-individuality program. And the reality is you are not broken. Most people who have excess body fat are insulin resistant and they can still lose weight as long as they're in a calorie deficit. So don't let the Instagram influencers fool you. Don't let anyone make you feel like you're broken. As long as you're in a calorie deficit, you can absolutely still lose weight. Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, could you give us a quick introduction to who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'm an obesity and lipid specialist physician and actually the medical director for Weight Watchers. Uh, I specialize in helping people lose weight, get metabolically healthier, and virtually all online. Uh, as I moved to the cloud some years ago. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to screen share 
my blood work, my blood work. And it's going to show you the blood work from before the glucose experiment to after the glucose experiment. And I just want you to go through and give me and everyone watching insight into what happened to my blood work after losing about 12 pounds in 30 days while deliberately spiking my blood sugar every day. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yep. I see your screen. So the one on the left is what was before the experiment. Yeah. So you can see the one the the one on the left has August 2023 below it, and then the one on the right has September 2023 below it. Do you see that? Yep. Awesome. So we'll go through, and, and this is a very comprehensive blood panel. So up here we have my cholesterol and triglycerides. We go. We have all of that options. We have coagulation. We've got metabolic and endocrine health. We have uh, glucose, hemoglobin A1C, insulin. We've got my liver health. We've got kidney and and uh, metabolic function. We've got electrolytes, iron, red blood cells, white blood cells, vitamins, minerals, dietary fatty acids, tumor indicators. We got a lot. Yeah. If you look at your lipid panel and for anybody listening, a standard lipid panel, you get a total cholesterol, you get an HDL cholesterol and the HDL cholesterol, people think of it as the good cholesterol. It's a little bit of a misnomer, but it's, that's the, the stuff that's not going to cause heart disease. Whereas uh, the LDL cholesterol and anything non HDL cholesterol, that's kind of a marker for uh, the little particles that can cause heart disease. And in your case, you had barely any change in the HDL cholesterol. Some might think eating sugar would drop it precipitously. You had barely any change there. But if you look at the um, your non HDL cholesterol at 135, which it shows it red there, that's where we start going, okay, it's probably a little bit of a risk factor there. You're now at 120. This is despite eating mostly sugar. I think what most people are going to hone in on though, is this triglyceride level. Cause mm -hmm. people think that eating tr uh, purely sugar increases your triglyceride level. You lost weight while eating more sugar. And despite that, you, you could say that it's not much of a change uh, or just a little bit less. So I think it's great to see that your triglyceride levels didn't just shoot through the roof uh, despite this uh, dietary change. So overall, I would say improvements in your lipid panel, uh, despite uh, spiking your, your blood sugar, uh, daily. So again, overall, this is a, a positive change in your lipid profile. Your HDL didn't change your triglycerides didn't change, but your LDL and non HDL, uh, levels did go down. And that's, that's an overall improvement. If you're looking at your insulin levels, those are very low. Now, some people can say these insulin levels can be spurious and all over the place, but yours being that low after eating more sugar, you're extremely insulin sensitive. This means that you are utilizing your insulin very well. Your, your tissues are, are responsive to insulin. Your, your body doesn't need to produce that much insulin to keep uh, your blood sugars at bay. So the fact that your insulin is, that's that's very low. That's stark low. Before, below five is, is great. Uh, and, and your hemoglobin A1C didn't change. Uh, I wouldn't expect it necessarily to, but some people might think that if you're spiking your sugars, uh, hemoglobin A1C is a average measure of your blood sugar over three months. They basically look at the blood cells and see how well they attach or how much they're attached to the, uh, the sugar is attached to the blood cells and measure this percentage of, of glycation. So yours didn't change despite spiking your blood sugars often. And then if you look at your fasting blood sugar, many people might believe it would go up since you're eating more sugar, this should cause more insulin resistance more uh, likelihood of prediabetes. Again, it's only a month, but yours went down. And this this intuitively should make sense. You were able to lose weight uh, and the energy balance probably makes the most uh, difference in people improving their uh, glycemic measures. But it's important to know that that's why looking specifically at blood sugar spikes by themselves is, is missing the, the forest uh, for the trees type of thing. So with your blood sugar, getting down to 78 fasting and then a 2.7 fasting insulin, you're very insulin sensitive and you didn't have, you had improvements in your glycemic effects. Here are my key takeaways from this. Jordan had a massive improvement in key biomarkers related to his metabolic health, despite having blood sugar spikes during the month. Yeah. I think it just goes to show that this gives an opportunity to have multiple ways of trying to lose weight. You don't have to pick one type of way or dietary pattern to lose weight. And you can actually have uh, more choice in the matter of what to do. Spencer, thank you so much. This has been incredibly helpful. I'll make sure we put your uh, your handles where people can follow you here and in the, the description of the video. 
Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Anytime. Well, I made it the whole 30 days and I lost 12.4 pounds. Overall, what I want you to take from this is that you can enjoy your favorite foods. You don't have to completely avoid that slice of birthday cake, candy, or your favorite sweet drink as long as you keep your calories in check. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you don't already, and I'll talk to you next week.